Well guys, I bought a mini excavator. This right here is a CAT 305 V2, so it is a mini excavator. Man, these things are expensive, but I, I think I got a pretty good deal on it. And uh, I got it from down in Texas it came from. I think it's originally from California. Doesn't have that many hours on it maybe three, 400 hours, not too many. I've put a little bit of time on it, but this is gonna be starting the first substantial project and we're kind of doing an all hands on deck type of thing, clearing out this hillside. We have about an 80 foot decline or descent down to the pond edge down there. And we wanna open up this hillside, get a good view down to that to be able to see uh, in all four seasons. And so today I'm gonna to use the Mini X to start to clear the edges of this hillside before that decline um, starts occurring and just get some of these six to 12 inch trees dug out of there, see how it goes, get a feel for the operation of this unit. I've done a little bit of trenching with it, but that's about it. This is this is really my first time ever doing any anything significant with a Mini X and I'm really excited. It's gonna be a bit of a learning curve, I'm sure, but uh, fortunately there's all sorts of videos out there online that have kind of helped me see the do's and the don'ts. That'll give me a little bit of a head start, but let's get started. Now buying this used, I wanted to get something that was outfitted pretty good and so this has uh, some extra hydraulics up on front. You're gonna see it does have a hydraulic thumb as well. It's got the hydraulic quick coupler on here, so if I do end up getting some other buckets, which there seems to be a thousand opinions about the right type of buckets that you can get for these, these things. So we're gonna stick with the one that's on here for now. It's not gonna have the four-way plow. This is just a fixed plow uh, or dozer blade on the front there just to push forward. It doesn't angle at all. And you may have noticed I did opt to get the version that has a cab on there. So you do have the full HVAC with the air conditioning and heat. Now, just to give you some scale, I am six foot three. And so it's a pretty, a pretty tall machine. However, it's, it's fairly narrow you know, maybe six and a half, seven foot wide. It's not that wide overall. Um, it does have a little bit of an overhang, I think a couple inches if you were to pivot this around, meaning the cab will overhang the tracks a little bit. But it also weighs, I think it says on here, yeah, you know, there's four different models, but 13 to 14,000 pounds. So it's not exactly the lightest thing in the world, but I wanted something with the extra hydraulic capacity. There were some cheaper models, some smaller models out there, but I just thought uh, where I got this one at the price point, it was a little rough. It's a little cosmetically beat up a little bit, but it's not too bad. I just wanted the extra capacity if I could get it. Now, some of you may wonder why I don't just use a tractor and we are gonna use a tractor for certain uh, portions of the project and just not every project is suited for a tractor. And we're doing property development out here. This is vacant land that we're trying to make it the way that we want to. And so there's just certain tools that are better suited for different applications. And depending on the size of your project, if you have a very large project, you know me, I've said rent a mini excavator. You can get your work done a lot quicker than you can with a tractor backhoe you know, picking it up, moving it around, resetting it. It's a lot more efficient. These are a lot more capable. So a lot of folks want to get a backhoe with their tractor and that's a very, very expensive add-on. You know, these days you're looking at 10,000 plus for many of these backhoes that are out there. And that can be very hard to justify if all you have are just a couple of projects up front and then that backhoe is just going to sit there for years collecting dust. So you don't necessarily need to go out and buy a Mini X like I did here. I have a long-term ongoing need uh, for something. We have 140 acres out here to manage manage and deal with and so there's just going to be uh, the jobs are endless and so I wanted to invest in a piece of equipment like this to tackle those big heavy projects but man there are some amazing excavator channels out there between outdoors with the Morgans and Let's Dig and Dirt Perfect and Andrew Camerata I mean there's just the list goes on and on and on and so you can learn a whole lot about what to do you can see how quickly they get work done and you can see why renting one for a week or maybe just a couple weekends here or there could be a complete game changer for you and avoid the burden of having to lay out all the cash for a backhoe by itself and we've shown you guys what's called a mini stump bucket as well and that's going to mount on the front end loader of our tractor we make them for small compacts and subcompact tractors so if you have a lot of small saplings or um, landscaping to do around your house it's a very affordable, cheap solution. In fact, we started off just messing around with an HD, a heavy duty version that's still in the prototype phase for some of the larger compacts. And when you're comparing that kind of a cost against a backhoe for your tractor or a mini X or rentals or anything else, that kind of a tool can be worth it. It can pay for itself very quickly. And it's one of those attachments that's nice to have around at a moment's notice. All right, I'm gonna hop in, we're gonna get to work here. If you're looking for a bit of a chuckle, today could be a good episode for that. This is really, I'm learning the ropes here. You know, if you guys have advice to share with the pitfalls, the do's and the don'ts with a Mini X, that would be great to know. Leave a comment down below. Other than that, we're gonna get to work. We're gonna see if we can get some drone footage today. It is pretty darn windy out here. We'll see how that does, but we'll turn some tunes on and get to work.
All right, well, we spent about an hour worth of time right now. Did a lot of cleanup along the edge, trying to familiarize myself with the controls. It's, it's fun. There's a few functions that come natural, like in my memory, they're logged in there, but there's a few other motions that it's like I do the opposite every single time. However, I'm just incredibly pleased with how fast this is. You know, you can move around, bounce around very quickly. The, the cat itself doesn't move all that fast, but you can get repositioned in a way where you can reach out and grab a lot of different areas. It's got such a long reach on it. Impressed with how powerful it is and uh, the digging and the pushing and everything else. And you got to be careful because if you if you're facing the wrong direction, you know, to the side of the tracks, it has a tendency. I mean, it would tip right over it, pull itself right over. So you want to be careful with that. But I tell you, this is night and day compared to a tractor backhoe. It is so much fun to operate it. It just feels like you're actually getting work done very quickly. And I, I know some of you guys absolutely love your tractor backhoes and that's great. But compared to a tractor backhoe, one of these things is just amazing. And I think that's kind of the point I'm trying to drive home is that you can get so much more work done. Um, they're so much more powerful. You don't have to cough up the big bucks to buy one, but if you can rent it, if you have small projects, if you get organized and can tackle it, in those short periods of time, it can make a lot of sense for you and it's worth considering. And besides, if you look at the size of these trees and the quantity, I mean, we were positioned in one spot and just pivoting all the way 180 degrees from one side to the other, digging them out, reaching them out, grabbing them, throwing them over here and kind of stacking them into a pile. And I, you just can't do that with a, with a tractor backhoe. Anyway, more to come with this. It's a big project. You might be able to see some of the, uh, the lake down there through the trees a little bit, but that's our goal is to get all the way down there. We're gonna mix in the skid steer with the brush mulcher to kind of clean out all the undergrowth. Uh, um, probably use the the tractor with the skidding winch or the logging winch as we start to take down some of the bigger trees It's gonna be a journey. It's gonna be bit by bit We're gonna knock it out when we can but we're gonna have a lot of fun along the way So that's gonna do it for us today again If you're looking for a really cheap alternative consider that stump bucket mounted right to your front end loader Check them out goodworkstractors.com if you enjoyed today's video I'd love to get a thumbs up from you hit subscribe to see more and thanks for taking time out of your day to stop by until next time stay safe We'll see you soon